Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. So before the world went crazy, I was trying to find the perfect solution for my video editing process. So I wanted to have some tool that would allow me to edit videos on my iPad, iPhone and Mac. And I wanted the transition between the devices would be as seamless as possible. I usually start my editing by looking through all the videos that I've recorded through my vacation and I just select the parts that are worth including into the future film. And because it's usually a lot of content, it's more handy to work on a Mac because you have a lot of memory there, a lot of storage. And when I'm done, I wish to move to something portable like an iPad or an iPhone. So if I'm on the go, I'm going to the office or I take a train or I'm just relaxing on a sofa, I just grab an iPad or an iPhone and I continue my editing. So once I'm done and I need some, you know, finalizing, precise editing, I wish to go back to the Mac, do those final touches and do the export and then I'm done. iMovie allows that transition, but it works only in one direction. So you can start your editing on an iPad or an iPhone and then transfer and import that project to a Mac, but not backwards. LumaFusion also allows this one direction approach where you can export your project as an XML and then you import it into Final Cut. But it warns you that it will lose some of the effects and you'll have to do that once again. And on the top of that, you have to actually own Final Cut and know how to work with it. But with Apple Silicon Max, we finally have a better solution and I think that for now it's the top one solution. And it's LumaFusion, but in a slightly different way. The trick is that if you own an Apple Silicon Mac and you have the LumaFusion on your iPad or on, or on your iPhone, you can go to the App Store on your Apple Silicon Mac, go to your account, select the iPhone and iPad apps, and you will be able to find the LumaFusion here, which you can install. I have it installed and now I will just open it. So the workflow could be the following. I have a project on my MacBook I do some editing there and then I wish to transfer it to the iPad. So I go to the export, select LumaFusion project package, then files. And then it asks me if I wish to include full original media or the trimmed media. The trimmed media will select only those parts that are already on the timeline. I don't want that. I wish full freedom of editing so i will select full original media it will be around nine gigabytes and then i start exporting it then i open that file from my ipad and it imports the project to lumafusion this project is around nine gigabytes as i told you and it's around five and a half minutes long and it has some color adjustments lots enabled some speed adjustments and transitions and it also has a few reversed videos and that may take some time during the import because LumaFusion basically creates a reversed copy of such of those videos. So let's say that I did some rendering here and I could potentially render my result on an iPad, but I still prefer to do this on a Mac because on an iPad we have this small problem. Let's say that we launched a pretty long export process and then we receive a Skype call from someone important. In this case, let's say remind me in one hour, whenever we receive a Skype call and we switch to another app or we just lock the screen, we will lose all the rendering process because it's the limitation of iPadOS. So I do prefer to do this on my Mac because then I could just launch the process. Let's do this here. So it starts doing it and I can safely switch to Safari, for example, and then come back and the process is still there. Now let me tell you a few things that I've discovered while working on the LumaFusion on my Mac that you should be aware of. First of all, you cannot customize the layout of the program. As you can see, the mouse doesn't change to adjust the width of the or the height of the windows. All we can do is to select one of the predefined layouts. I prefer this one, or maybe this one is even better. 
I've compared the rendering time of the iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro and surprisingly, iPad managed to export it a bit faster. For me personally, 10 seconds are not a big deal, at least the MacBook won't lose all the rendering process when switching to another app, but still, iPad managed to do this quicker. Also, I had an export error once on the MacBook Pro and it suggested me some alternative export method or I could also optimize my project first. And my advice is to try the alternative method because, well, I have no idea what that alternative method means, but it takes the same amount of time to export as the primary method. I tried the optimizing version as well and it took crazy 26 minutes to optimize the project and then it took the same amount of time to export it. So I encourage you not to spend half an hour, it's not worth it, just go with the alternative method to export your project in case you have that error. As for the file management, you cannot just drag and drop videos to be able to start working with them in LumaFusion. You have to manually go to the import media, select files and select the file. So then it will be added to the project. And also it can only import the file from a local storage of your Mac. So if you're trying to import something from an external SSD or a memory card, then you have to copy it on the local storage first, and then you can safely import it to the LumaFusion. Once it's imported, you can safely remove it from the local storage because it will be now stored in the app's sandbox. And actually keep in mind that if you will be running out of storage on your Mac, Consider opening the LumaFusion and check the import folder because there could be a lot of unused videos that you wish to delete. All the hotkeys work on the Mac's version the same way as they do on the iPad. So you can press Command B to cut some videos and backspace to delete them. However, on the iPad, if I press the Command key on the external keyboard, it will show me the all the possible commands that this application have, but nothing happens if I press the command on the Max version. If we go to the video editor, nothing happens when we just scroll through the trackpad. So we have to click and then drag any parameter to make a change, or you can just pinch to zoom, to zoom in or zoom out. And if you like the scrolling behavior, then we have to go to the menu and enable this touch alternatives option. And in this case, we will be able to just scroll with two fingers to be able to change the parameter. However, it adds some mess in other places. So for example, if we wish to pinch to zoom, it doesn't work anymore. So we have to hold the option button and then it somewhat emulates the touches. And also if we go back, we will notice that the hotkeys don't work anymore. So pressing the backspace won't delete the video. So I keep this option off and I have my hotkeys back. Also, none of the functionality requires this option to be enabled. So I disabled it once and forgot about it forever, but it's good to have it there. So the solution in general may be not that ideal, but for now it's the best option available. And to me personally, it's a deal breaker because you don't have to spend money on Final Cut and you don't have to spend time on learning how to use yet another video editor. Because LumaFusion provides you the same experience across all the devices, iPad, iPhone and Mac, and with no sacrifice. So it's definitely worth trying it. If you have any questions regarding LumaFusion, please add them in the comments. Hit a like if this video was useful for you. It's been Alex and see you at the Geeks Table. Bye bye.